Hello chemists and welcome back to Bale's Chemistry. In this episode, we're going to look at how we actually calculate the rate equation from experimental data. You'll find this in the AQA specification under 1.9 rate equations and is primarily covered on paper two of your final exams. In this episode, I'm gonna quickly recap the orders of reaction that we learned about in the previous video. Then I'm gonna explain how we set up an initial rate experiment to generate the data. We're going to then move on to look at how we process the data once you've collected it and we'll finish with an exam style problem. Remember to watch through to the end where I'm going to give you the key points that you need to write down for your revision in this topic. If you've got a moment and you found the videos useful I'd really appreciate you subscribing to the channel which also means you'll find out when I release new videos too. start with a quick recap of what the orders of reaction assigned to each reactant show us. The order of reactant shows us how changing this reactant will change the rate of reaction, or the initial rate of reaction to be more correct. Now, changing the concentration of a zero order reactant will have no impact on the rate. Changing the concentration of the first order reactant will have a proportional impact on rate. So if you double the concentration, you will double the rate of reaction. And then finally, changing a second order reactant will have a square proportional impact on the rate. So if you double this reactant, you will quadruple the rate. When it comes to determining the orders of reaction for each reactant, so that you can then go on to work out the rate equation, you need to set up an experiment which varies each reactant concentration independently in turn. This will allow you to see how it changes the initial rate of reaction. To do this, start by identifying the independent variable. This is the concentration of the reactant that you're going to change. Then the control variables. These reactant concentrations will be kept constant to allow you to observe the effect of the first reactant that you are changing. And then finally, the dependent variable, which will show how the initial rate has changed as we've changed the first concentration. In this example, we can see the concentration of A has doubled and the initial rate has doubled also, which means that this order reaction is first order. In an exam, we are usually faced with a larger data set which has been provided for us. There are four simple steps to follow to identify the orders of reaction for each reactant and therefore build the rate equation. First, look at each reactant in turn. Then identify the changing concentrations. Then highlight the control concentrations. And then finally, look at what impact that's had on the initial rate. If you follow these four steps for each reactant, you'll quickly be able to build up the rate equation. We'll now work through this whole data set and calculate the rate equation. We'll start by looking at reactant A on the first two lines, and we can see here that it doubles. Now, reactant B and C will remain constant, and then we can look at the initial rate, which we can see quite clearly is also doubling. This shows the reactant to be first order and it allows us to start building up our rate equation with the concentration of A to the power of one. We'll now turn our attention to reactant B. We can see in lines two and three that reactant B doubles. Unfortunately for us, reactant A and C both remain the same. Looking at the initial rate, we can see that it's been multiplied by four. Now, as we've doubled B and the initial rate has gone up by four, this is square proportional, which lets us know this is a second order reaction. Now, we can add this to our rate equation by putting the concentration of B to the power of two. Now for the final part of the data set, reactant C, we'll look at these two lines, one and four. Now it's a little bit more complicated because they're not next to each other, but we can see that the reactant has multiplied by three times. Now A and B have both been kept the same, and we can look at the initial rate and see that it's also increased by three times. This shows reactant C to be first order, and allows us to complete our rate equation with the concentration of C to the power of one. Now, let's take a quick recap. We started off the video by looking at the different orders of reactants. Now we've got zero order, first order, and second order. Then we covered how to set up an initial rate experiment to generate the data that you need to work out the rate equation, remembering to change only the concentration of one reactant at a time. And then finally, we've just looked at the four step process to look at all the data and analyze a simple set of data to work out the rate equation. 
We're going to use this now to have a go at answering a more complicated exam question. So here's a data set that we're much more likely to see in an exam. We've got nitrogen monoxide across the top, carbon monoxide and oxygen as our three reactants. And we've got an initial rate column at the end. We're going to start off by looking at the order of reaction relative to nitrogen monoxide. So first up, we'll look at the first column and we'll see that that reactant is multiplied by three. And just like we did before in the simple example, we'll check out carbon monoxide and oxygen. Now these have remained constant. We'll now look at the initial rate and we can see that that initial rate has multiplied by nine. Now because carbon monoxide has multiplied by three, the initial rate has gone up by nine. We can see that the order of reaction to cut nitrogen monoxide is second order. And we can add this into the rate equation with NO to the power of two. Next up, now we're going to consider the order of reaction for carbon monoxide, CO, on the initial rate. So using experiments one and three this time, we can see the concentration of carbon monoxide has gone up two times. And we're lucky enough here that we've got NO and O2 remaining constant. And we can see that the initial rate has had no change. Because of this, we can say that carbon monoxide is zero order. And because it's zero order, we don't add it into the rate equation. Now comes a slightly more tricky part. So we're going to have a look at the order of reaction for oxygen. Now we can identify where the order of reaction for O2 doubles, but there is no constant here for NO or CO. So what we'll do is we'll use what we've already learned, and that is that NO is second order and CO is zero order to create an additional row of the table. With this additional row, we're aiming to create two lines of data where you keep the concentrations of NO and the concentration of CO the same to allow a comparison of the change of O2. So I'll take the data from row three and adjust it slightly so I can compare it now with row four. What you can see is that I've taken the concentration of NO at two times 10 to the minus two and doubled it to end up with four times 10 to the minus two. I've also halved the concentration of CO whilst keeping O2 the same. Now, because CO was zero order, halving it or changing the concentration anyway will have no impact on the initial rate of reaction. But because I've doubled the concentration of NO, in that second order, I'll need to multiply the initial rate by four. And this will allow me to calculate an initial rate value for comparison against my fourth row of the table. Okay, chemists, this is one of my exam top tips. If you don't get data where only one variable is changed, then always calculate a new row underneath that table in the exam paper, like we've just seen. This makes it easier for you to calculate it, but it also shows the examiner what you did and it makes it much easier for you to score marks. Right, back to the question. So we're now gonna work out the last order of reaction from this data, and that's for oxygen. So we're gonna compare the row data that I just made with the bottom row of the table. Here we can see that the reactant O2 has doubled. Now we're working upwards now, which can be a little bit different than how we've been doing when we've been working down the rows, but it's exactly the same. Now I can see that these two concentrations have remained constant. And then we can look at the initial rate and we can see here that the initial rate has also doubled. And this means that oxygen is gonna be first order. And it allows me to add it to the rate equation to complete the whole set with the rate order of reaction for nitrogen monoxide being second order with the order of reaction for oxygen being first order. Right, there you go. Let's have a look at the essential points for your revision notes. Remember, orders of reaction, zero order, no effect on the initial rate. First order, a proportional effect on the initial rate and a second order, a proportional squared effect on the initial rate. When you do this, set up an experiment changing only one reactant at a time. It'll make it much easier to work on the data. Process the data in those four easy steps that we talked about at the beginning of the video. And then use any known orders to calculate any missing data when you're given it in an exam question. Brilliant chemists, thanks for watching this episode of Bales Chemistry. If it's been useful, go down there and click on the thumbs up. If you've got any questions, write them in the comments below. And most importantly, make sure you subscribe to the channel. It really helps us grow. And it reminds you, 
where to come and find all the chemistry content that you need.